Today, I want to show you guys how to get cinematic interviews on a budget with a small crew and limited equipment. And to do this, we're going to break down this interview I shot for my docu-series, Law of the Goat. We're going to break down the lighting, how I choose my camera angles, and best practices for capturing pro-level audio for your interviews. The first step to shooting any interview is choosing the right interview location. Most of the time, I tend to walk around with my camera and frame up certain parts of a room or an area and find the best spot for my subject to sit in. Now, when I'm doing this, there are two things that I'm looking for. The first thing that I'm looking for is as much depth as I could possibly achieve between my subject and the background. And then the other thing that I like to look for is some sort of symmetry. As you guys can see in this shot, we have the garage door open back here, and there's a ton of uncontrolled light spilling all over the room. And don't get me wrong, this is definitely a look, and you could definitely try to go for this, but in my experience, I like to be able to control the light as much as possible. So in order to do this, we shut the garage door and we only left the colored lights on in the gym. And because we had the ability to control those lights, we chose a color really close to teal because that would create color contrast between our subject's shirt and skin tone, which creates a little bit more separation from him in the background. After I choose the location for the interview, I set up my tripod and I really try to hone in on the angle of my A and B camera. For my main camera angle, I chose a medium shot with the camera slightly tilted up, angled a few degrees to the right of my subject so it's not dead center in the middle of the frame. And there's a few reasons why I chose to shoot it like this. The subject in the interview is a coach and he's an authority figure in this gym. So I tilted the camera angle a little bit up to make it feel like he was a little bit more of a powerful, authoritative presence in the documentary. I also angled the camera a little bit to the right and not necessarily dead center talking to the camera because I didn't want the audience to feel like he was speaking directly to them. I wanted to feel like he was a little bit removed from the audience because the documentary isn't about this coach, it's about a specific fighter. And on his documentary angle, we made him look directly into the camera, making it feel like he is talking to the audience. And the documentary was coming more towards his point of view. Now for our second camera angle, I wanted a tighter shot a little bit closer to 90 degrees, and I wanted the camera to be at eye level. You should never choose the camera angle randomly. The angle should always serve some sort of creative purpose to the character and the story. Now that I had my angles established, it was time for me to start lighting my subject. Now the first step to lighting for me is establishing my key light. In this particular scenario, we backed ourselves all the way up into a corner of the gym to achieve the most depth we possibly could. And that really only left us one opportunity to place the key light on the right side of our subject, which was camera left. For our key light, we are using the GVM 650B, which is a monster of a light. And I'm using an Aperture Light Dome 3, which is awesome because this dome you could set up in literally five seconds. And when you have a small crew, that setup time is so crucial, especially when you're doing something like a documentary interview. And I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, this has made such a huge difference in our setup time and just, especially when like I'm a smaller crew or maybe even by myself, I can quickly just clip this one little piece in and I have a soft box built. And not only that, but this also comes with multiple layers of diffusion, including two layers of silk and a honeycomb grid that you could attach to the soft box. If you guys are in the market for a new diffuser or maybe you wanna upgrade your current diffuser, I definitely recommend getting this one. Setup time is super easy, build quality is fantastic and it gives you multiple options for diffusion, which is huge. And right now, guys, I have a 10% off anything Aperture down in the description below. I'm gonna leave that for you guys in case you wanna buy one of these. So after I place my key light, I like to angle it somewhere between 90 and 45 degrees away from my subject. And I like to give it a little bit of distance between the light and my subject because I don't wanna have such a harsh light on my subject's face. I kind of want it to be a little bit softer. I have the light somewhere between like three and six feet away from my subject at minimum. And this is what it looks like with the key light turned on. As you guys can see, we've created some contrast on the left side of our subject's face, giving a little bit of depth to the lighting. Now the next light that we added was an Aperture 120D using a GVM mini softbox, and we placed the light on the opposite side of our key light, and we angled the light towards the back of our subject's head. And the goal of this light was to fill in a little bit of that shadow on the left side of our subject's face and just give a little bit more light to his shoulder area. This was pretty much our lighting setup. It was super simple, super easy, but I was a little bit worried about the exposure levels in the background. Reading my camera's histogram, it was a little bit too dark 
and it was very close to not having enough information there. So what I would normally do if I had a little bit bigger of a crew and more time to actually film this interview is I would add a little bit more of an ambience and bring up those exposure levels with the same color tone in the background. That way when it came time for color grading, I could really crush those blacks or shadows and really get what I wanted out of the color grade. So even though I was a little bit worried about exposing properly, it worked out fine in the color grading and fine in the edit. I actually really liked it, but I would suggest that it's always better to be safe than sorry. And if the exposure levels are a little bit too close to zero when you're on set, I would just bring them up a little bit if you can, if you have the time, money, and budget to do so. But a lot of times we don't, right? So if you don't, make sure that you're not losing that information. And if you are losing that information, bring up the lighting or think about changing the lighting setup because the worst thing that you could do is be way too underexposed or way too overexposed in any given interview situation. And if you guys wanna learn more about documentary filmmaking, me and my team have been putting together a course that walks you through every single step of the filmmaking process, from ideation to final edit, and we even go over how to sell your project to major streaming platforms. Our goal is to release this course by the end of the year, and if you guys wanna learn more about that, I'll leave a link down below or right up here, where you guys can sign up for the email list and you guys will be the first to notified as soon as this course comes out and the discount code that we're gonna be giving out for the first few months of our release. I'm super excited about it. I feel like we're, we're definitely getting some really great information and knowledge around the, the community and figuring out what you guys really need to actually get better and get your films done. But most importantly, we're trying to make this thing as useful as possible to a wide variety of filmmakers so if you guys have any questions about that course or maybe you want to give any insight on what it is that you're looking to get out of a film course drop some comments down below and i'll be sure to get back to you guys now for audio i always record on two separate sources i'll record on a shotgun mic straight into the camera and then i'll record a lav mic into a zoom recorder just so i have a redundancy and I have a backup in case one of them fails or one of them cuts out or doesn't sound good, I always make sure that I have two separate audio sources recording. Now for the shotgun mic, I try to get as close to my subject as possible without being in the frame, of course. And just a good rule of thumb, you guys wanna be about two to three feet away from your subject and try to point the, the microphone towards your subject's mouth. Now for the lav microphone, you wanna try to make sure that it's somewhere in the middle of their chest. You don't wanna be too high because you're not gonna get enough chest voice inside the audio and you also are gonna miss a lot of the, the intelligibility of the higher end coming out from the mouth. So being somewhere around here, you get kind of the best of both worlds and that's where you want the lav mic to live. Now after audio, the last thing that I do is I test my subject's eye line. I'll take my fist, I'll make a fist, and I'll be like, hey, can you look here for me? Can you look here for me? And I'll, I'll find where it looks the best on camera for my subject, and then I'll place myself right where my hand is. That way we could have a conversation, they could focus on me and they could look at me. Now that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is the quicker, easier setup way is I'll just sit right behind my camera and I'll, I'll make eye contact with them and I'll talk with them right over the camera. So it feels like they're looking right into the lens the whole time they're talking. Otherwise, if I don't need them to look directly into camera, I'll sit beside the camera and I'll get them to just have a conversation with me. And always it's important to make sure that you get them warmed up and loosened up and get them feeling like this isn't necessarily like a stuffy interview, this is just us having a conversation. So try to keep that in mind when you are conducting your interviews. Now just a few last tips, I would make sure that all of your interviews feel like they're in the same world as the other interviews that you're shooting for your documentary. And what I mean by this is that there's nothing that's like way too far off or there's not like a, a wide variety of different colors or interview angles that are super obscure, you kind of have to make sure that all of your interviews are shot and they feel like they're in the same documentary and in the same world. One thing that I thought of about this documentary is that very rarely would Shazab and Laura, which is the lawyer, speak back to back. So the fact that their interviews kind of look similar didn't really make that much of a difference in the documentary. There was some contrast of lighting and color between the coach and the other two interviews. And that was because most of the time when one of them was talking, either the fighter or the lawyer, 
there would be the coach talking before or after them. So that kind of gave a little bit of a break and color separation between the three interviews. While I think the coach's interview is pretty different from the other two interviews, it still feels like it's in the same world. And that's one thing that you gotta think about when you are filming these interviews for your documentary. Make sure that they have purpose, they are deliberate in the creative decision and direction you're trying to go in for your documentary. And also, are they too similar? Are they not similar enough? Where's kind of like that right medium of this feels like it's in the same world, but it doesn't feel too boring to where you feel like you're just watching one long interview, you know? So just a couple of things to think about guys. And like I said, we are coming out with this documentary course at the end of the year, or we're trying our best to get it out by the end of the year. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. And if you guys want to learn more, don't forget to sign up for the email list and uh, definitely ask me questions, man. If you guys have any questions about documentary filmmaking, that is what I'm here for. That is what I'm passionate about. I want to help you guys make better films. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.